Introducing the Tactical Wood Gas Battery Bank Kit with 120 volt inverter, USB charging, and 12 volt output. Hey, this is Mike with Tactical Wood Gas, and I'm showing today our new battery bank that includes solar charge controller, which is something that we didn't have on the older design, but I found I needed myself, and I thought I'd introduce a new product that uh, now includes that. So let's go through everything that the battery bank has and what it's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So the the main output here is the inverter. The inverter is rated at 800 watts and it will source that uh, for as long as there's uh, power left in the battery. The two main outputs here are 120 volt regular uh, AC outlets and if you switch the three position switch in the up position it'll activate the inverter and each of these will be active. Now, if this is a total of 800 watts, not 800 watts per, per unit, or per outlet, rather. Um, and that also activates the two USB 5 volt charging outputs. Now, if you want to, if you only need USB, and you don't need the, the 120 volt AC, you can save some power by switching into the down position. That only activates the USB output. Now, turning it around to the back and give you kind of a, a quick look at that. Uh, nice and tidy wiring there. Everything's done and ready to go. You don't have to worry about that. And we've got insulation wrapped around it uh, to help uh, protect everything and keep it all nice and sturdy for you. Now, the next thing we have is a 12 volt output. And going back to the back again, we've got an Anderson power pole connector here. And this is the heavy gauge wire that leads up to the inputs on the inverter. And then kind of behind it, there's another wire that goes down and inside. And this connects directly on the battery. So we've got high current capabilities. And I've used this successfully on my 100 watt uh, ICOM 70, 7200 uh, HF rig uh, without any problems at all. So this, that's your 12 volt output. So there's your, uh, your three main things. You've got 12 volt output for whatever you want to run off of that. You've got AC 120 volt outputs and you've got USB charging outputs. Now the, the next thing you need to worry about is the charging. How do you get uh, charge back into the unit after you've used the charge up or while you're using it so it lasts longer? So there's several options. Uh, one of them is kind of the desktop mode uh, is how I think of it. And that's when it's sitting, for example, in my ham radio station. It sits right next to my radio. It's got a wall outlet here that, or not a wall outlet, a wall plug. So it plugs into an outlet in the wall. And this part of it here is the uh, AC uh, battery maintainer. So what it does is it takes power out of the wall, and this works while the grid is up, um, to make sure that when the grid goes down when when you lose power that your battery is at 100% charge. It also has some anti-sulfating uh, modes and things like that to make your battery last a lot longer. So there's only one um, thing to do with this which is just plug it in the wall and you'll see some indicators uh, that come up and, and, and uh, turn. You'll see uh, an, uh, kind of an orange LED uh, light up behind the little lightning symbol there and that shows this charging and then when it turns green then the battery is charged all the way up. So that's uh, for where you happen, happen to have AC power available to you to keep the unit uh, fully charged. Uh, that's you know not always the case that you're gonna have that and so we have uh, next to it a solar charge controller. Now the solar charge controller let me Get you a close-up view of, of that. The solar charge controller has a, a an output that I've already wired. Everything's done. You don't have to worry about that. What you do need to look at is the input. So the input uh, comes out on the side here, and there's a little twist tie that lets you cut it loose. And you've got about 18 inches of wire with the Anderson power pole connector there. And I've got some of my solar panels set up with uh, this particular uh, connector. And so I just plug it into it. And what the solar charge controller does is anything below 13 volts 
it turns on and allows up to 7 amps to come in and charge the battery. And then when it gets all the way up to 14.2 volts, then it cuts off and lets it uh, drift back down to 13 volts and just it's, it switches on and off the solar panel uh, or other charging method um, and keep, protects your battery. And it also allows you to use smaller wires. Um, it, one of the places where that's a, a big advantage is when you're in your car. One of the things I do with another one of these that I have is I keep it in the back, uh, in the trunk of my diesel Jetta when I'm going on longer trips uh, to shows that are way out in the boonies. Uh, I've been, I've been in areas where windstorms come through and knock down trees, and it doesn't take much of a tree to stop a sedan, you know, Jetta diesel from from moving. So I keep a little electric chainsaw in the trunk with an extension cord, one of these guys, and uh, I'm able to cut branches, cut trees, and get them out of my way. It comes with these connectors now. The Anderson power pole connector here connects on to this charging input. And there's only one way. You'll see red to red and black to black. If you try to do it the other way, the, they won't mate up. So you plug that in. And then in the, my trunk, I've got a cigarette lighter uh, output. So I plug this in there. Um, and even if I've used the heck out of my battery and my battery is you know, all, you know, basically discharged, um, you know, I, I tried. I don't charge it, discharge it more than halfway, just to save uh, battery life. But the, even then, that's a, quite a bit of current that it would want. Well, the solar charge controller only allows seven amps to go in to charge the battery, and that protects your wiring. Uh, most US, most cigarette lighter outputs have a 10 amp um, fuse in the thing, and this uh, keeps it, you know, three amps below that. So you're your wiring doesn't have to be big and beefy, just the normal car wiring that uh, comes with your vehicle is going to be fine and safe. Um, so that's one way to use it. Um, the next one is we supply another style of connector that are popular in automotive and, uh, and solar um, applications. So uh, this, in this case, it's a where Anderson power pole connectors, inputs and outputs don't matter. Uh, you know, red is plus and black is minus with this style. You need to know whether you're sourcing or receiving current. So this is wired for being on the receiving side. On the receiving side, the the 12 volt is exposed and the ground is is uh, shielded. Um, but because there's no direct connection to the battery, we don't have to worry about this 12 volt shorting on something um, because it, there is no 12 volts there unless it's being supplied by being plugged in. So uh, you would uh, connect with the other gender of this where the shielded side is 12 volts and the ground is exposed and it plugs right on there um, and that works really well. So there we have how to charge it uh, through the solar charge controller and then the final thing is uh, especially for if you want to get it if you've discharged it um, I've got a niece who uses this in her apartment uh, she's not an apartment anymore but back then she was in the apartment and the idea was she, the power would go out frequently in, in her area. She would use this to, you know, turn the TV on, keep the kids busy while she was uh, dealing with, with, you know, the effects of the power being out. And it would run her entertainment center and, uh, you know, just keep the kids happy. And, and when it uh, had run down, she would just pick it up or she'd have her husband uh, carry it down to the car, set it next to the car, turn the car on, and then use her jumper cables and clip on uh, the plus and minus just like you do uh, on when you're jumping a car. And with the car running, um, you're going to get about, uh, say, 30 to 40 minutes uh, is all it takes to get this thing charged back up. Um, and then, you know, probably to 90, 95% charge. At that point, you, do, you turn off your car, take the cables off, and, and run the thing back out to where you want to use it and uh, just repeat that cycle until the power comes back on. So that's the, the, the main items. Um, and uh, in the next section, we'll talk about how to install that battery. Here's the sticker that comes on the side of the unit. I'm not going to read it all to you, but you can pause right here and read it and then continue when you're ready. 
So hopefully you paused there and you read through the sticker and it's got the instructions on how to buy the battery, how to install it, how to charge it. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how easy that is. So what we have here is I went to Walmart and I got a Everstart 29DC uh, 122 amp hour battery. So it's got plenty of uh, juice in the thing. As far as uh, watt hours go, it's about uh, 1,440 watt hours, um, and which is a lot of power. Uh, the inverter is going to allow you to access about half of that, um, and then it'll set off an alarm saying, hey, time to recharge. So let's, uh, let's get that thing started. So what we've got is we've got the unit you just bought. We've got a 916 wrench that is so short that when you're wrenching on one of these terminals is not long enough to reach the other. So what we're going to do here is pull the lid off and you'll see we've got the red and the black wires that we talked about earlier and then we've got inside of here some things to pull out. So we've got the adapter that allows you to charge from the car or from solar panels. We've got three owner's manuals that uh, uh, are for the three big units on, on the top of the battery bank. A strap to strap it down uh, that comes with it. And then if you've got a shorter battery than the one I recommend, you can use this to uh, as a spacer to take up that extra space uh, to keep the battery from sliding around. We're not going to need that because we're using a full-size battery. So hang on for a second here while I put the battery in. Okay. So we've got the battery in the plastic box. It fits nice and snug. And now I'm going to turn the lid upside, upside down. So I've got my red, red and black wire. Now I'm going to look on here and I'm going to see that uh, this one has a minus and so this post is the negative and that's where the black wire goes. And then I see a plus over here in this corner and so I know that's the positive terminal and that's where the red one goes. So I'm going to grab the one that's closest to me and I'm going to unscrew the, it's a, a I'm not sure what size um, thread that is, but the the wrench needed to tighten it is a 9 16 So here's the wrench and when I put it on there, when I when I go around the corner here, it uh, it's not long enough to reach the other nut. So I tighten that up nicely and then I go and take the other nut off. Get the red onto the plus and then tighten that down. You're, it's possible that your batteries may come with different size nuts, but for me, uh, the one I bought has 916. So I'm wired. That's basically it. I put the lid on, clip it in place there. When I turn it here, now it's heavier, um, I can flip it up and we see, oh, I was down. There you go. Flip it all the way up. Um, and you see the, the little LED there went red and, and blinked for a minute or a second. And that was doing its startup diagnostics. Uh, and then when it turned to green, that means that I can plug in AC loads here and run the thing. So at this point, this thing is ready. Uh, my 12-volt my output on the back works. I can charge my phone or my tablet off the USB. I can run my laptop computer and my television. Um, I've got a smaller uh, uh, chest freezer in the basement uh, that's pretty power uh, efficient um, and uh, is able to start up with this. If you've got some really big monstrous industrial refrigerators or you've got some stuff that's older pre-Energy Star, uh, you know, you have to look at the thing and make sure that the startup current does not uh, take more than 1600 watts and that the the steady current is not more than uh, 800 watts, um, but uh, in in many cases it's going to work out just fine uh, with you know the modern efficient appliances. So there we go, a complete system ready to go, uh, and 
I'll put a link in for the uh, separate video that I did with the older battery bank, uh, which is it's still you know for sale. It's not obsolete, and it's still really good. It just doesn't have the solar charge controller on it. But uh, in that one, I show how to add two extra batteries in parallel um, for uh, extra energy storage, and and you get you know three times the uh, the use between charges. Uh, when you add three times the batteries. Okay, I'm going to show you how simple getting the AC charging uh, is. This is the AC charging unit that's built into it, and it's got a normal wall outlet plug. And what I've got here is an extension cord that's plugged into AC power in the wall. So all we do is connect these guys together. And we look over here, see it comes up, all the lights light up uh, for the initial diagnostics. And then it turns on the little lightning symbol that comes up orange. And orange means that the unit, the battery is not fully charged and that charging has begun. Uh, if we leave it long enough, uh, then the LED turns green and that tells you that it's reached uh, full charge. It's, it's peak charge, it's ready to go. And you can just leave it like that. Uh, for as long as you want to. Uh, there's you, no risk of overcharging. The unit is very smart and is uh, able to manage the charge and the health of the battery. So really that's it for, for the wall charging of the unit. Hey, this is Mike with Tactical Wood Gas and now I'm demonstrating how to install one of our battery banks into a vehicle. This is a little... Uh, um, sedan that I have, a little diesel that gets me around uh, town. I've got a battery from Walmart and this guy is uh, Everstart. The model number is 29DC. Uh, ignore the uh, uh, cold cranking and, and cranking amps and all that kind of stuff. What we care about is 122 amp hours. The instructions are on the side. So when you buy it, it doesn't come with a battery. But it does come with instructions that tell you how to install. So the big thing is 12 volt DC, um, deep cycle, and 100 amp hours or better. Um, and you'll get a lot of use out of that. So we've got to do the first step. Well, we've done the first step, which is get the battery and get in there. The next step is connect the cables. So in, inside the uh, lid, take this apart, there's a little twist tie there, go over and find the plus. Take the nut off of that guy, take the plus over and stick it on. Get that thing finger tight and then take the bolt off the minus and get that on. It may spark here, it does. So that sparking is normal. It is um, the input capacitors of the in power inverter uh, charging very quickly when you connect that. So because you have that spark, don't do this in some any place where you've got a heavy gas fumes, that sort of a thing. Um, and if you're outdoors, uh, you'll be fine. So next we need a wrench. This one's a 916 to match the size that we need for these uh, these nuts. Um, and I tighten this. One thing is I've chosen my shortest 9 16 It won't quite reach between the two and that's very important because you don't want to accidentally short these two. If you short them then you get a 1200 uh, amp hours of, of energy dumped all in less than a second which is you know hundreds of amps and that melts stuff and, and all kinds of things go bad if you do that. So that's really all there is to the inside. We flip the top over the latch on the side and on the other side, so that snaps down nicely. Um, so the the guys that the the connector that comes off the back of the inver uh, the inverter here, which is also connected into the batteries. This is 12 volts for running your ham radio or or different kinds of loads. This is an Anderson Powerpole 30 amp connector. Um, and then we've got another one on the other side. This one is has a longer lead on it. And this one you take off. 
and we're going to connect these together and see how I can do this one-handed. There we go. So we've snapped it in um, and we've got uh, these. So I can go over here to my um, cigarette lighter adapter and plugged it in there and now the uh, solar charge controller is charging. It's limited. Right now I don't have the battery on. So let me uh, take one second. Okay, I'm back. So let's pull this guy around. So well, what we have here is the charging light is on and this thing is limited to seven amps max. Um, so that means when you plug it in, uh, you're, even if you've got a really discharged battery, you're not going to draw more than your wiring, your car wiring can handle. Um, so there we go. So now if you, uh, if you stop and you want to charge from um, uh, the solar, we've got the US, or the, sorry, the uh, Anderson power poles, and we've also got this, um, I don't know, I can't remember what it's called, but it's popular with CBs and, and those kind of things from the old days. Um, so we provide both those for charging inputs. This again limits it to seven amps max and will keep your battery charged up. So now we are ready to go and we can turn it down uh, to, to enable just the two USB charging or flip it up. The red comes on while it's doing its uh, uh, initialization. So now we've got AC power here, 800, 800 watts or 1600 watts for a short amount of time for surges. And uh, I'm set up now to take my electric chainsaw out and do some clearing and uh, other work that, uh, you know, everything that, that I can do that stays within 800 watts, which I've got a, you know, a small electric that uh, works well for that. So um, the last thing I do is I push it. I can't do that one-handed. Anyway, I push it all the way forward against the, uh, the back of the seat there so that if you have to brake hard, uh, your, your battery isn't moving around. And we've given you enough, uh, th th in most cases, that that'll work. It's long enough to do that. Um, so here we go, uh, ready to go. Um, every time that uh, the, the car is on, this battery is charging. And when the car is off, uh, it's not draining anything from the battery. So ready to go with a car installation. Hey, this is Mike with Dr. Wood Gas, and I'm showing how to connect our battery bank to solar. I've got two versions of Gold Zero products. Here I've got the uh, Nomad 20, and I've got the Gold Zero panel. This is the uh, Boulder 30. Um, it works with other ones as well. In fact, the connectors on the Gold Zero is a little bit odd, so I'll show you what I did for that. Let's start with the little one. This is the Nomad 20, and it's got all the accessories in the back. What I'm going to do is get the cigarette lighter plug and I'm going to, there's only one connector that it'll fit onto. So make that connection and push it all the way. It's got to snap at the end there, otherwise you're not all the way in. So close that up to tighten it up. So now what I want to do is make sure that my battery bank is ready to, uh, to, to accept that. So now this is the little adapter plug kit that comes with the unit. And we've got here the Anderson power pole connector. We're going to connect red to red, black to black. There's only one way it fits, so if you try to do it backwards, it won't connect in there. So now we're ready to receive power onto our cigarette lighter plug. And we'll stick it into the socket there. And then we will flip it open facing the sun. Now if we take a close-up look here in the shadow, if we take a little closer, we see the little orange light there that shows that uh, it's charging. If I close it up here, see the light goes out and when I open up the solar panel the light comes on. So that tells you it's charging. When the green light comes on that means the battery is all the way charged up. So now I'm going to switch over to the bigger 30 watt panel, which obviously will charge faster. So in on this one, in the back, it's got it in and out. 
and you've got a plug here and we want the power out. So we're plugged in all the way there. Now I've adapted this thing since these are coaxial connectors that I don't uh, have, that I'm not supporting basically because it's a weird connector. I basically cut off the connector, split out into the center conductor and the ground, and then soldered those onto a connector here. And the big thing with, uh, if you're going to do this like I did it, is the, the 12 volt needs to be on the shielded side and the ground exposed. Because on our adapt, on the adapter that comes with the unit, it's the opposite. And uh, that way you get the correct, you get, you get 12 volts to 12 volts and ground to ground. So here we have a bigger panel and we've got the LED charging and we're making power uh, without gasoline, without anything. We're just using the sun. Here on a cloudy day, we're making power. Thanks, this is Mike with Tactical Wood Gas and uh, come see our site, www.tacticalwoodgas.com. Hey, this is Mike with Tactical Wood Gas. You've bought your battery bank, you stuck the battery in, you charged it up, you've had your first power outage, and you are able to use your battery bank for lighting and entertainment and whatever you uh, need to. And that's great, except it's a longer power outage than one charge. So here's a quick way to recharge your battery bank. First thing is, pop the hood to your car and explode, find your battery. Find the positive terminal and the negative terminal. And then I'm going to turn on the car. So, the end that I'm going to put on the battery here, I've got and I'm keeping these separate. And then the other end that's going to go down onto the battery bank, I've got clamped onto these, this chunk of wood so that it keeps them separate and they don't short. We don't want to short the plus and minus together. So first I'm going to connect to the battery here. Okay, now I'm going to come down to the battery bank, pop the top off, and you don't have to disconnect these cables, you can leave them on. Take these one at a time. Positive. Connect the positive there. And then we'll connect to the negative. And there we go. Now my alternator does about 70 amps. And probably maybe five of it is, is uh, running the engine. So I've got about 65 amps that are coming into the battery to charge it up. So that is going to be... Uh, say for a 122 amp hour battery, that's right about 30 minutes to charge it up if it's been run all the way down. So I'm going to let it sit here for 30 minutes, uh, and I'm going to stay with the car so that nobody runs off with my car while it's running, for 30 minutes. And then at that point, I'm going to disconnect the batteries here. And I'm going to disconnect the batteries up here. off the engine, get the lid back on, and your battery bank is fully charged and ready to run everything that you need to run uh, just like before. So you just repeat that cycle of uh, 30 minute recharge from your car until the power outage ends and you'll be good to go. Thanks for listening. This is Mike from Tector Wood Gas. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more, Come to www.tacticalwoodgas.com and you'll see videos, audio, podcasts we've done with other people, uh, lots of uh, information on how our products work and how they may help you out.